Welcome to HVAC exam practice test. Our topic today is heat pump service. Use the link in the description to download the app on the App Store for free practice tests. Number 1. What do some heat pump systems use as a metering device? A. A fixed orifice. B. A low side float. C. An inverted flow control. D. An AEV or capillary tube. The answer is A. A fixed orifice. Explanation. The heat pump can incorporate TXV valves or fixed orifices for controlling the flow of refrigerant. Number 2. During the heating cycle, what will the indoor coil become? A. A condenser. B. An evaporator. C. A receiver. D. An accumulator. The answer is A. A condenser. Explanation. During the heating cycle the indoor coil is the condenser. The heat rejected by the coil is used for heating the structure. Number 3. During the cooling cycle, what will the outdoor coil become? A. A condenser. B. An evaporator. C. A receiver. D. An accumulator. The answer is A. A condenser. Explanation. During the cooling cycle the outdoor coil becomes the condenser and rejects heat to the ambient outdoor air. Number 4. When the heat pump operates in defrost mode, what normally happens to the outdoor fan? A. It is operating in high speed. B. It is operating in low speed. C. It is off. D. It is operating in reverse. The answer is C. It is off. Explanation. In order for the heat pump to melt any accumulated ice off the outdoor coil, the heat pump will reverse cycle, and the outdoor fan is shut off to increase the head pressure to melt the ice. Number 5. Which of the following is true about refrigerant flow through the compressor? A. It is normal in the heat mode and reversed in the cooling mode. B. It is always the same regardless of operating mode. C. It is normal in the cooling mode and reversed in the heat mode. D. It can flow in either direction depending on operating mode. The answer is B. It is always the same regardless of operating mode. Explanation. The compressor operates the same as any other unit. The refrigerant flow is reversed by the reversing valve control, depending on mode of operation, heating, cooling, or defrost. The valve is located after the compressor in the discharge line, and before the compressor in the suction line. Number 6. What should a heat pump that uses a reciprocating compressor be equipped with because of the possibility of liquid floodback? A. Suction receiver. B. Crankcase receiver. C. Liquid receiver. D. Suction accumulator. The answer is D. Suction accumulator. Explanation. Since the heat pump operates in adverse conditions, the compressor must be protected by a suction line accumulator to prevent any liquid refrigerant from entering the compressor. Number 7. What is done to a heat pump to enable it to operate efficiently at lower temperatures? A. Two compressors are connected in parallel to decrease the overall compression ratio. B. Two compressors are connected in parallel to increase the overall compression ratio. C. Two compressors are connected in series to decrease the overall compression ratio. D. Two compressors are connected in series to increase the overall compression ratio. The answer is D. Two compressors are connected in series to increase the overall compression ratio. Explanation. Two compressors are connected in series creating two-stage compression to increase the overall compression ratio at low ambient temperatures. Number 8. During the defrost cycle, which mode does the system switch to? A. Heating. B. Pump down. C. Cooling. D. Emergency heating.
The answer is C. Cooling. Explanation. When the system goes into defrost, the reversing valve switches to the cooling mode, shutting off the outdoor fan and bringing on supplemental heat to compensate for cooling the indoor air. Number 9. During the heating mode, what is true about the refrigerant in the outdoor coil? A. It is under low pressure. B. It is under high pressure. C. It is under atmospheric pressure. D. It is under a vacuum. The answer is A. It is under low pressure. Explanation. In the heating mode the outdoor coil is the evaporator and therefore, under low pressure. Number 10. What is the recommended CFM across the evaporator coil of a heat pump? A. 600 to 700 CFM. B. 150 to 225 CFM. C. 200 to 300 CFM. D. 400 to 450 CFM. The answer is D. 400 to 450 CFM. Explanation. Manufacturers recommend 400 to 450 CFM per ton should be used to limit the head pressure when operating in the heating cycle. Too little or too much airflow can cause severe problems. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel for updated videos every week.